in this tutorial, uh, I'm gonna walk you through the whole process of uh, backing up your Android head unit uh, based on MediaTek chipset. So uh, we're gonna start off by um, preparing our head unit, then move on to driver installation uh, and installation of SP Flash tools, uh, which we're gonna use for uh, as a main application. And also, of course, the actual backup or memory dump that we're going to perform. Before we begin, I'd like to recommend a very simple way of connecting your uh, Android head unit on your desktop at home, um, rather than sitting in the car and doing everything. And the reason for that is because it might take you a number of hours to uh, work with your unit. And it's not very comfortable to do that in the car especially if something goes wrong and you have to dismantle it to restore it by a test point or similar methods. Now, uh, this is what I'm using. It's a uh, laptop power adapter but with a special plug that will make it very easy for you to connect your head unit at home. Uh, the link is in the description and the cost is like 15 bucks. Okay guys, so you take your harness it will look something like this. And then you should have a black cable, red and yellow. These are the cables that we need to connect to the power supply. Now, what you do first, you put these two together. I soldered them, but you can just twist them together. That's a battery cable, the, uh, the yellow one. And the red one is ignition. And on the other side, you strip your ground cable black. Now, after that's done, all you do is basically you put these two cables into a plus. Do it like this. Yeah, it's in there. And then the black cable go, goes into minus. Like that. And then fasten the screw. No need to over fasten, just to make sure it's tight. Perfect. And now you're ready to connect your Android head unit. So this one goes into the head unit and the other end goes to your power supply. And this is what it would look like, pretty much. Yeah, there you go. There's your connection. Uh, I would suggest if these cables a strip, just put a bit of tape on them, make sure that you don't, you don't have any shorts. Okay, so connecting this, and now I had you should start. There we go. So the first thing you're gonna do, you're gonna go to settings, and then system info. Then you're gonna take a picture of this. After that, you go to Android settings, and go to settings and scroll down to about vehicular platform and then just scroll up a little bit and then take a picture make sure you see the kernel version here okay now you can shut down the unit and take out all the cables and only leave the four pin usb cable So the very first thing that you need to do, you need to download this file, uh, link is in the description. Once you've downloaded it, you need to extract it into a folder we can call memory dump. In that folder, you have uh, uh, driver files, you have a generic scatter and preloader, uh, and you also have SP Flash tools. So the very first thing that we're going to do is to install the driver. Now. Uh, if you have uh, Windows 7 or later, uh, you will need to do a bit of a hack to successfully install the drivers, and I'm going to show you how. So first, we need to restart computer in advanced mode, so push start, and then type uh, advance, there you go. So you should see it change advanced startup options, right, and then you click restart now. Okay, now the computer is restarting. And here you will choose uh, this option and then you're gonna go to advanced options 
And then you can pick startup settings. And now push restart. Now uh, you're gonna push number seven on your keyboard. And now your computer will restart in advanced mode. All right, now we are going to install our drivers. For that, we go to the folder where we downloaded them. MediaCon drivers. Right, here they are. So, now you go to your uh, control panel. Uh, device manager. And then you go to uh, add legacy hardware. Go to next. Choose install the hardware that I manually select. Next, show all devices. Next, have disk. And now we point towards the folder where we have our MediaTek drivers that should download it. In this case, it will be in downloads. There we go, MediaTek Windows 10 driver. Now, if you have Windows 64 bit, obviously you choose the top one, uh, X64 MTK. And of course, if you have 32 bit Windows, you choose this one. So I have uh, 64 bit Windows, I'll be choosing that. Click OK. And then go to next. And next. Right. So this message is absolutely fine. Push finish. And you take this one. And then you delete the driver, but not the software. So uninstall device, but do not click here. Uninstall. And you're done. And that concludes uh, the installation of the MediaTek driver. Now you can restart Windows and proceed with the installation of uh, SP Flash tools. All right, so the next step is to install SP Flash tools. So you go back to your folder uh, where you unzipped everything. Memory dump. I would suggest that you do create uh, a, a desktop shortcut by right clicking on the flash tool XC file uh, and then going to um, send to and then choose create shortcut. Right. So that's done. Go back to memory uh, dump folder. And now we are going to open up flash tools by right clicking it and opening it as administrator. There we go. And then we're gonna point towards our scatter file. Uh, in the folder. Old memory dump, yeah. So go to GeneX scatter and preloader folder and choose your scatter here. Now it's really important that you only use this scatter file and preloader when you create backup. Do not use these files to restore it because chances are it won't work. But for now, you know, in order to do backup, you can use these generic files. Right. So proceed to the memory test tab and then unclick these four boxes here. So only RAM test should remain. You push start and insert the USB cable into your computer and just wait. This is done. You can click this away. Take out your cable. Uh, go back to your folder and then uh, create a new text file or text document and call it memory map. Open it. 
and then go back to SP Flash tools. And now we're gonna copy our memory uh, addresses. The first one is being EMMC part boot one. So just highlight it, push control C or copy, go back to your text file and paste it. And the next row is gonna be EMMC part user. So same thing here, highlight it, copy the text and put it here and click save. So these are our uh, memory regions, very important. And these are unique to your unit, by the way. So do save them. Now, the next step is uh, to create the memory dump. We're gonna exit flash tools and uh, then we're gonna restart it as administrator again. Go to read back file. If there's anything here, just delete it. Remove and click add and then double click here and then navigate to your uh, memory dump folder. And here, change the file name to boot one and click save. Right, so here hex should be chosen, region, we're gonna use emmc boot one, start address, you can leave it as it is, times 16 zeros, and on the length, remove this, and instead, go back to your memory uh, map file, and then copy this address, and then insert it here. Click OK, and then click Read Back, and insert the USB cable into your computer, and just wait. Perfect. Close this OK window, take out the USB cable, then go back to your folder and you can see boot one file has been created. Now boot one is very, very critical because it contains your preloader. The next and the final step uh, of the memory dump is to actually export all your other data from your unit. So first we're gonna close down flash tools. And then we're gonna restart it again as administrator. Uh, go to uh, read back, remove this, add, double click, uh, navigate to your uh, folder. And this time, I'm gonna call this file rom underscore user. Click save. Type is hex, region, emmc user, start address zero times 16 zeros, and on the length, remove this, Go back to your memory text file and then copy the unique address that you have here. And then paste it in. Click OK. Uh, click Read Back and insert your USB cable into your laptop or computer, whatever you have. Now, this process is much longer. It will take anything between 30 and 60 minutes. So, I'm going to speed up this process and we're gonna continue in a short moment. Okay, now it's done. So the only thing that remains is for you to close down the flash tool, uh, take out the USB cable, and then go to the memory dump folder, as we called it, and make sure that you have the ROM user file here. It should be about 15 gigabytes if you have a 16 gigabyte flash or larger, depending on the size of your flash uh, on your head unit. So now uh, there's only one thing that remains, and that is to extract the preloader and scatter file unique to your head unit. And you'll be able to use these two files to restore your unit in the future or to install uh, and upgrade other firmware types. Okay, so first what you're gonna do is you're gonna visit uh, 4PDA forums. Uh, the link is in the description. And once you're here, uh, you are going to click here. I know it's in Russian, but you can see where it is. And then pick a WWR250 and download it. Once you've downloaded it, install it and start the application. If you have an unpaid version, then you will see this advertisement now and then. Uh, 
but do please support the developer. I think it's only about ten dollars. So uh, you know, I highly recommend to support the developer for this piece of software. And once you see this screen, uh, start with going to select file, and then navigate to a memory dump folder where you saved your uh, dump, and pick boot one file. You probably want this to look exactly like on my screen. So head on to setting and then tabs and then pick second grind. That way you will have the exactly the same user interface as you see here. Now, we're gonna head on to auto mode and then pick number three, which is start uh, autopilot. There we go, nothing to do here. Start the process. And there we go. Now, the first thing that we're gonna do is to create our scatter file. So you choose create scatter file option here. Then you make sure you are in your memory dump folder. Then we're gonna create a new folder called my scatter and preloader. There we go. Enter that folder. Click select folder. And now the process is completed and you have your scatter file here. Right. So uh, we need to make one change to the scatter file so that you don't receive DRAM errors when you try to use it for um, importing files or installing a firmware. So first, we're gonna create a copy of this scatter file. Just push Control C and then Control V. And then we're gonna call this file, we're gonna rename it to scatter.txt.bak. Now we have a copy of this file. Go to the first a txt file and open it. Then we're gonna make a search, push Control F and type data. And this is going to bring you to the partition index section. Now we go back to the website for WWRMTK. Scroll down a little bit. And then you see this section. Copy the value here, which is zero times C and then followed by seven zeros. So you copy that value, uh, go back to your scatter file. And then you look at the partition size line. Now delete the value here and then paste the new value. Don't forget to save and close. And now the creation of your scatter file is completed. Right, so going back to our uh, WWR tool, the next step is to create a preloader. We're actually gonna do that by selecting collect firmware for a hard reset. When this opens, we're gonna create a new folder called hard reset. We're gonna select it and the process starts. Right, now it's done and uh, automatically the hard reset folder will open. Now here you have a number of files. We can delete the scatter file here we don't need it, the rest we keep. And here, you will see your preloader. So copy your preloader, control C, and then paste it in here. So now you have your original preloader unique to your head unit and also the scatter file unique to your head unit. And that completes uh, the full memory backup process. Here is another trick you can do with WWRMTK tool. Now, as you've seen in your memory dump, the ROM user file is quite large, uh, depending on the size. It's basically the whole size of your hard drive or flash on your head unit. It also contains all of your data. So for instance, if you made a memory dump, uh, you know, with your uh, passwords, login details, contacts, etc., it will all be in there. Now, let's say that you want, will want to share your firmware uh, with somebody, but you don't want them to have your data. 
or that you basically want to have a smaller backup instead of sitting on 15 gig, 16 gig of backup or whatever you have. Now what you can do, you go back to the WWR MTK tool and then you pick cut ROM including user data. Uh, wait for the advertisement to end and then create a new folder called my firmware or something. Enter the folder, click select folder and then wait for the process to finish. And this will take a few minutes depending on how large your memory dump is. And now it's done. So only one last step remains. Go back to memory dump and then go back to your my scattering preloader folder. And there copy the user data IMG file and then uh, paste it into your my firmware folder overriding the user data image uh, file there. Replace. There you go. And now you can see this file is considerably smaller, only 137 or so megabytes. And that's it. Now uh, you can share this firmware with anybody. I should mention that if you need to restore your head unit, do not use the firmware to do that, but use your ROM user file. And the reason for that is because for some reason, I don't know why, when you restore full firmware, you might be facing issues with your head unit. So do not delete your ROM user file. Right, and that concludes the tutorial, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. As always, all the links are in the description below. And of course, don't forget to like this video if it was helpful to you.